the cockpit, the cabin, and the baggage area sort of have three different missions. So they're laid out. Um, they're laid out in different ways depending on how the user is um, interacting with the, with the aircraft. So the cockpit um, is designed specifically to be embracing. So you know, if you were to sit, you know, sit normally and put your hands out in a very normal position, all the controls seem to just fall right, uh, right in the, to line with where you want to be. Um, DMFD is tilted slightly towards the pilot and the, uh, the glare shield is shoved down low just so you can see right out. Ingress and egress is a really big deal. Um, in a lot of our competitors' aircraft, you actually have to step over some sort of control or step you know, down into the cockpit. In this aircraft, you can actually sweep your feet right past the power quadrant here. Um, so getting in and out should be a lot easier. Uh, the seat actually is allowed to move forward once you're actually in place. But if you needed to get out, it's just that simple. Also, entry into the cockpit is, is helped by the width of the aisle. It's one of the only aircraft where you can actually pass into uh, or in between the seats with your hips straight so you don't have to turn. We also don't have an overhead switch panel, so that's something else that you don't hit your head on. Um, coming in, it also doesn't get in your way. Another really cool part about the design of the cockpit is we, we have these big panoramic wraparound windows. Um, this point here, uh, the, the point where the window actually terminates, is purposefully set there so that you can see both wingtips. So when you're taxiing around in a tight environment or you're uh, pulling up next to the fuel pump, you can see right where you want to place your wings. Our overall aircraft is about the size of a TBM, but the actual cabin cross section is around the size of a mid-sized business jet or even the Pilatus PC-12. Um, the windows are very, very large, they're the size of a Gulfstream window. One of the design goals that we were going for is to have a very highly sculpted cabin that was purposefully left open to interpretation. So when you buy the aircraft, um, you could uh, decorate it or, or uh, modify it, customize it. I love the wash lighting. Um, one of the reasons we set the wash lighting uh, where it is is we wanted to maximize headroom. So we actually took the cabin interior and offset it right in this area where your head sits but we also didn't want to make it so low that you actually saw the wash lighter. I think it really complements the cabin and it also makes it appear wider. Um, everything we did in the cabin uh, was to actually make it wider and to make it appear wider so it's a very spacious um, very spacious environment where we tried to make the um, cockpit embracing the cabin is actually purposefully very spacious. We specifically made the uh, the cabin walls look uh, like taut surfaces or taut uh, fabric stretch over an armature. So all of these uh, sculptural elements that you see um, actually react to one another as if they were fabric stretched over an armature. Everything seems to be in tension um, and this is actually even repeated throughout the seating design. The seats are designed so that they're asymmetric along but together they actually form symmetry. So you can see the the styling element that runs through the seats together uh, actually tie right into each other. And this line here actually runs right into this styling element here. So everything is really harmonious and, and uh, really well uh, proportioned, I think. We have um, a belt line split here that bisects the upper, uh, the upper headliner from the lower headliner. And the reason for that is uh, we were able to take some of the literal tension out of the fabric itself so we didn't have to use uh, uh, stretchy material which feels cheaper. So this is the highest quality material and part of the reason we were able to get high quality non-stretchy material to wrap is by bisecting the upper and lower. Another um, key is it actually allows us to mount the panel a lot tighter to the cap. Um, and also I think it's a very pleasing aesthetic to break up the upper and lower cabin. So that's an area where I think um, we were particularly successful because it looks good and it has a real function. The flex storage area is best viewed when you're walking into the aircraft. We really want to make a great first impression. So when, you, when you're standing on the stairs of the aircraft, you see these beautiful glasses uh, framed by the window behind it so it brings in a lot of natural light and you also see some very nice wine bottles. Um, so first of all, first impression uh, entering the aircraft was a big, 
big part of what we wanted to, to address in the design. Secondly, um, everybody's not going to want that. They're not going to want a big portion of their aircraft dedicated to uh, to a serving area. So we wanted these modules to come out and be used, you know, as you see fit. What we're showing here uh, at this show is our executive interior, which is, you know, the most. Uh, uh, the, the highest end, most luxurious interior. In the middle, midsection, you actually have some cabinets that you can, you know, uh, you know, use at your discretion. And our lower section could actually be a potty or a cooler. Uh, these modules are designed so that they come out. So this entire section here, this entire section here, and this entire lower section are removable. And at that point, you'll be able to put golf bags and snowboards and skis into these modules. So what you're left with is these black lines here would just be shelving. Um, so it's a very large, very flexible cabin. Um, if you wanted, or, or baggage area, um, if you wanted to, you could actually take out all the shelves and all of the cabinetry and fit two more seats uh, in this back area for a high density configuration.